Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'd like to discuss what is a very common issue on the T2 chip MacBook Pros that will randomly die for no reason, like many Apple products have for the past, well, 12 years at least that I've been in business. Let's go over what occurs here and how Apple has done it yet again, but this time it gets better because when this happens, it just deletes all your data, which is a total Apple way for a device to fail. So recently I did a video on how the T2 firmware can corrupt itself, and when that happens, what it is that you need to do in order to get the machine back working. The symptoms will be that the machine doesn't turn on at all. If you plug it in with a USB-C charger and an amp meter, you'll see that the board is stuck at 5 volts, it's not going to 20 volts, the CD3215s are not working, and also that it's stuck at 60 milliamps. So you'll be stuck at 5 volts, PP bus G3 hot will be low compared to the normal 12.56 to 13 volts, you'll be getting closer to 12.23, and the machine is dead. And the way that we fix this here is by going into DFU mode and fixing the corrupt T2 firmware. It is a common problem. Sometimes this occurs because an update failed. Other times it occurs because, well, Apple. Now, this was an issue that prior to Catalina was a fairly routine, simple fix. However, after Catalina came out, it started opting people into this thing called Secure Boot by default. So Secure Boot, it says, if your Mac includes the Apple T2 security chip, you can use Secure Boot to make sure that only a legitimate, trusted operating system loads at startup. Available only on Mac computers that have the T2 chip. Now, the problem here is that if you enable Secure Boot, I can't boot the machine into an external operating system in order to try and grab files off of your corrupt operating system the way that I used to, and I'm not able to access the drive as well via the Lifeboat connector to get information off the soldered on SSD, because there is no more Lifeboat connector after 2017. Now, what's really, really bad here is that if you have Secure Boot enabled and your T2 firmware just decides at whatever reason it's gonna die, the only way that I can get the computer to work again is by destroying all of your data. I need to erase it in order to get the computer to work again. But your data wouldn't have been retrievable anyway because the computer is dead. So when the computer's dead, your data's there. But to get the computer to not die, I need to erase your data. And what's really bad with Catalina is that it seems to opt people into this by default. Whereas in the older operating systems, it was not opting people into this by default. Every single customer that we have explained this to has said, I don't remember opting into that. I don't remember choosing that. So it seems like everybody with Catalina is having this problem. So if you have Catalina and you would like for your data to not be completely unrecoverable, if your machine someday for some random reason just decides to die, I would suggest that you disable Secure Boot. If you don't disable Secure Boot and this T2 chip decides at some random time, I am going to corrupt my firmware, all of your data on the machine will be gone. Further, Catalina introduces some new, interesting serialization measures that I was not aware of. We tried replacing a Wi-Fi card on an A1502. This machine does not have a T2 chip. It does not have a T1 chip. It had, used to have none of this kind of serialization crap. But on Catalina, when we changed a Wi-Fi card for another one, OEM, from a working MacBook, into this machine, it does not work in Catalina. But the customer's original Wi-Fi card doesn't work. So we tried, uh, you know, wiping BIOS, clean ME region, all of that, and going back to an old operating system, the old Wi-Fi card still didn't work because it was broken. The new Wi-Fi card worked. The moment we go to Catalina, it doesn't. It seems like Catalina, even on an older machine like an A1502, seems to have the ability to tell that I have changed the Wi-Fi card, and once I've changed the Wi-Fi card, well, it's not gonna work anymore. When you go to an Apple store and you have this issue where it is taking 5 volts, 60 milliamps, and not booting up, I'll let you guess what the Genius Bar tells you. This is the future if people continue to support a company that does this. I moved to a new facility. I have 14 people here whose livelihood is made off of repairing Apple products. Yet here again, I'm telling you, please, if you want the future to be repairable in any way, shape, or form, if you don't want your data to just go away because your machine decided, I'm going to kill myself today. Consider purchasing from a different company. Most of the users that are being auto-opted into this feature, most of the users that are subject to an increased failure rate as a result of adding another point of failure via the T2 chip, they didn't need it and they didn't ask for it. 
This chip is causing more problems than it solves, in my opinion. You now don't only have a PCH that can fail, you have a PCH and a T2 chip and firmware for it. You now have another point of failure, which would be understandable if you have revolutionized the way that we do computing, but you haven't. You have the additional point of failure on top of the PCH, now you have the T2 chip and all of its firmware that is, I mean, let's face it, this is a company that 25 years in can't even figure out how to get a laptop hinge right. And you're expecting them to not lose your data when it's soldered onto the board. I implore you, please do consider purchasing products from a company that does not treat its users like complete, utter trash. Send a message that we want devices that are repairable, or at the very least, devices that just don't crap themselves for no good reason on a regular basis in the name of security. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video.